Hello and welcome to the world of Lubrizol Life Sciences. Lubrizol Life Sciences caters to the pharmaceutical and medical device market segments, offering innovative technologies that improve your products and the lives of consumers who use them. We link science to life. For over 50 years, Lubrizol has been a global producer of high-performing excipients such as carbopol, pemulin and polycarbophyll polymers for solid, semi-solid and liquid dosage forms used in oral and topical applications. These polymers impart valuable functional benefits such as bioaddition, controlling drug release from tablets and improving flow properties in semi-solid and liquid formulations. Carbopole polymers are synthetic, high molecular weight cross-linked polymers of acrylic acid available in both powder and granular form. In oral solid dose formulations, carbopole polymers can be processed by all three processing techniques – wet granulation, dry granulation and direct compression. Today we will learn the aqueous and non-aqueous wet granulation processing techniques using carbopole polymers in oral solid dose formulations. First, let us understand the aqueous granulation process. Aqueous granulation process can be performed by two methods. The first method is the direct water addition for in-situ binder activation and the second method is the addition of prepared aqueous dispersion of carbopole polymers. Carbopole polymers have high affinity to water. Carbopole polymers also have good binding properties and there is no need for any additional binder in the formulation. In the direct addition method, water is added to the dry blend comprised of carbopole polymers, active ingredients and other coexipients. During the granulation process, the binder activation takes place in situ. Carbopole polymers from the dry blend absorb the water and hydrate. The hydrated polymer then binds the powder forming the granules. Considering carbopole polymers high affinity for water and the in time for in-situ binder activation, the following four parameters should be controlled during aqueous granulation process. Amount of water, rate of water addition, mixing speed and wet massing time. Amount of water. The recommended amount of water is about 10 to 20 weight percent of the dry blend. The amount should be optimized based on the dry blend composition and the mixing equipment efficiency. Components such as microcrystalline cellulose or other insoluble ingredients may need more water than lactose or any other water soluble ingredients. High shear mixer is generally recommended over planetary or other low shear mixers. Rate of water addition. For uniform distribution, water should be added gradually, either as a thin stream or as droplets or as spray. Water should not be added at once. Mixing speed. The impeller speed should be sufficiently high to facilitate fast and uniform distribution of the added water. Let me emphasize here on the tip speed concept. The impeller speed is a function of the equipment size. When changing the equipment, the tip speed rule must be used to calculate the impeller speed. For example, a linear tip speed of 2.5 meters per second achieved at 350 rpm in a 5 liter bowl corresponds to 45 rpm in 250 liter equipment. Wet massing time. It is very important to allow sufficient wet massing time for equal distribution of water and for the in-situ binder activation process. During the water distribution and in-situ binder activation phases, the blend may appear dry. However, more water should not be added and this may lead to overwetting. Wet massing time is to be determined based on mixing equipment efficiency, formulation and the choice of solvent. Based on this understanding, we will now demonstrate the aqueous granulation process by direct water addition with appropriate, excessive and insufficient amounts of water.
In the first example, we will demonstrate an appropriate amount of water addition. The formulation comprises of 85% lactose and 15% carbopole 971P NF polymer. The amount of water used represents 13% of the dry blend, which is an appropriate amount of water for this formulation. Lactose and carbopole 971P NF polymer are passed through 40 mesh screen. They are loaded in the high shear mixer. The impeller is set at 100 rpm and the chopper is set at 300 rpm. Dry blending is continued for 10 minutes. The impeller speed is now increased to 350 rpm while chopper speed is maintained at 300 rpm. 45 grams water is added as a thin stream. The mixing is continued. Note that during the first one or one and a half minute, the blend is looking dry. And now we can see that wet granules are forming. The chopper speed is further increased to 2880 rpm and mixing is continued for one minute to complete the wet granulation process. These are the resultant wet granules. The wet granules are loaded in fluid bed dryer and dried to a moisture content of less than 2%. These are the resultant dried granules. The dried granules are milled using multi-mill fitted with 1.5 mm screens. These are the resultant milled granules. The milled granules are blended with 0.5% glidant and lubricant in V-cone blender for 5 minutes. The particle size distribution and the granule characters of the blended granules are as shown. The blended granules are compressed into tablets at 800 mg target weight. The compressed tablets are tested for physical parameters such as average weight, thickness, hardness and friability. The tablet properties are as shown. Thus, this aqueous granulation process has resulted in good granules and robust tablets. In the next experiment, we will demonstrate what happens when an excessive amount of water is added during aqueous granulation. This formulation comprises of 85% lactose and 15% carbopole 971P NF polymer. The amount of water used is 25% of the dry blend, which is an excessive amount of water for this formulation. Sifting and dry blending operations are carried out exactly as per the previous experiment. The impeller speed is now increased to 350 rpm while chopper speed is maintained at 300 rpm. 50 grams water is added as a thin stream. The mixing is continued and an additional 38 grams of water is added to the blend. We can now see that an over wet mass is formed which is difficult to process further, thus demonstrating negative effect of adding too much water. In the next experiment, we will demonstrate what happens when an insufficient amount of water is added during aqueous granulation. This formulation comprises of 85% lactose and 15% carbopole 971P NF polymer.
The amount of water used is 5% of the dry blend, which is an insufficient amount of water for this formulation. Sifting and dry blending operations are carried out exactly as per the previous experiment. The impeller speed is now increased to 350 rpm, while chopper speed is maintained at 300 rpm. 18 grams of water is added as a thin stream. The mixing is continued for 2 minutes. No granule formation is observed. Mixing for an additional 2 minutes leads to a mixture of wet granules and a large amount of dry powder, indicating poor granulation, thus demonstrating the negative effect of using an insufficient amount of water. These three experiments have shown that the amount of water, the mixing speed and the wet massing time are critical parameters for conducting aqueous granulation by direct water addition in formulations containing carbopole polymers. We will now learn the second method of aqueous granulation that is by using preformed binder dispersion. The following experiment demonstrates high shear granulation by addition of preformed binder which is an aqueous carbopole dispersion. This experiment shows aqueous granulation by the addition of a 2% aqueous dispersion of carbopole 971P NF polymer as a binder to lactose. The amount of binder dispersion used is 15 weight percent of the dry blend. A 2% aqueous dispersion of carbopole 971P NF polymer is prepared as per standard dispersion technique. Lactose is passed through 40 mesh screen and loaded in the high shear mixer. The impeller speed is set at 350 rpm and the chopper speed is set at 300 rpm. 52.5 grams of 2% aqueous dispersion of carbopole 971P NF polymer is added as a thin stream. And now we can see that wet granules are forming. The chopper speed is further increased to 2880 rpm and the mixing is continued for one minute to complete the wet granulation process. Note that since the binder dispersion was preformed, the wet granule formation was much quicker in this example compared to the direct water addition case that required in situ binder activation. These are the resultant wet granules. The wet granules are dried to a moisture content of less than 2% milled and lubricated exactly as seen in the first experiment. The particle size distribution and the granule characters of the blended granules are as shown. The blended granules are compressed into tablets at 800 mg target weight and the physical parameters of tablets are tested. The tablet properties are as shown. Thus, this aqueous granulation process of addition of prepared binder dispersion of carbopole 971P NF polymer has resulted in good granules and robust tablets. After having learned the aqueous granulation, we will now learn the non-aqueous granulation process. The following experiment demonstrates high shear granulation by non-aqueous granulation process. In the case of formulations containing high levels of carbopole polymers such as 20% or 25%, the non-aqueous granulation process may be adopted. Appropriate precautions should be taken while handling the solvents. The same principle of in-situ binder activation seen in aqueous granulation applies in this also. Carbopole polymers swell in polar solvents. During the non-aqueous granulation process, carbopole polymers absorb the added solvent, solvate, 
swell and bind the powder forming the granules. The solvents recommended for non-aqueous granulation are ethanol and isopropyl alcohol. Non-polar solvents such as methylene chloride and chloroform can also be used, but only in combination with polar solvents. Typically, greater amount of solvent and a longer wet massing time are necessary for non-aqueous granulation due to the difference in solvation compared to water. We now demonstrate the non-aqueous granulation with isopropyl alcohol for a blend comprising 75% of lactose and 25% of carbopol 971PNF polymer. The amount of isopropyl alcohol used is 30% of the dry blend. Sifting and dry blending operations are carried out exactly as per the first experiment. The impeller speed is now increased to 350 rpm while chopper speed is maintained at 300 rpm. 105 ml of isopropyl alcohol is added as a thin stream. Wet massing is continued for about 6 to 7 minutes. And now you can see wet granules are being formed. Note, the longer wet massing time required for non-aqueous granulation compared to aqueous granulation. The chopper speed is further increased to 2880 rpm and mixing is continued for one minute to complete the wet granulation process. These are the resultant wet granules that are dried in fluid bed dryer, milled and blended with lubricants exactly as per the process seen in the first experiment. The particle size distribution and the granule characters of the blended granules are as shown. The blended granules are compressed into tablets at 800 mg target weight and the physical parameters of tablets are tested. The tablet properties are as shown. Thus, non-aqueous granulation process has resulted in good granules and robust tablets. Note that in the case of aqueous granulation, only about 13 weight percent of water was required and the wet massing time was short of about 3 minutes. However, in the case of non-aqueous granulation, a higher proportion of isopropyl alcohol that is 30 weight percent and a longer wet massing time of 7 minutes was required. Extended release tablet formulations of metformin hydrochloride, diclofenac sodium, verapamil hydrochloride and others have been successfully developed in various Lubrizol laboratories using the three different granulation techniques. You can access these formulations from the Lubrizol Life Sciences website. To summarize, we have seen the demonstration of aqueous and non-aqueous granulation techniques. In the case of aqueous granulation, we have demonstrated the appropriate, excessive and insufficient amounts of water as well as granulation using preformed binder dispersion of carbopole polymer. We have also seen the non-aqueous granulation technique using isopropyl alcohol. In all cases where the appropriate amount of water proper liquid addition techniques and wet massing were used, we were able to demonstrate that carbopole polymers produced good granules and robust tablets. We hope that you enjoyed learning the granulation techniques using Lubrizol's carbopole polymers. We encourage you to contact your local Lubrizol representative to find out how Lubrizol Life Sciences can enhance the performance of your formulations and be the link to help you 
improve lives.